thank you for your introduction yesterday and good afternoon everyone. So today I'm very honored to make, uh, make my presentation in front of the big names in the governance research. So you know, uh, we have uh, been uh, conducting the LIM project uh, uh, introduced by the yes, son. So this is the last year of our project, so that I, I'd like you to give me a good comment and a suggestion in order to uh, bring it to a successful conclusion. So, uh, my topic, nutrient imbalances, uh, regarded to the one of the glo serious global issues, uh, which are caused by the human activities, such as uh, mass production and consumption, and land use and the hydrological changes, and so on. So, in general, the global studies treat with the global environmental issue as if they were single phenomena emerging on the earth. But in reality, the global issues emerge as a whole of the numerous local issues. So as to solve the global issue, we focus on the watershed levels to link between the global and the local processes. So nutrient imbalance derived issues such as the eutrophication and the biodiversity loss universally emerge at the watershed level. So the watershed management is considered an effective way to solve such issues because the watershed is the basic spatial unit of the nutrient cycle. However, it often has neglected the variety of local issues emerging within the watershed. So we aim to seek the watershed governance for the inclusive solution uh, to local as well as the watershed issues. So in a project, we focus on the two contrasting watersheds in Asia to discuss the utility and applicability of our governance approach to the wide range of the uh, watershed systems. So first, I will show you a case study in Lake Biwa, Japan, and then Iyo-san will introduce the Laguna de Bay watershed of the Philippines. So in Lake Biwa, the eutrophication was mitigated by the infrastructure structures such as a sewage treatment system, uh, but uh, human nature relations are currently weakened in exchange for the comfortable and convenient life dependent on the infrastructure. By contrast, uh, Laguna de Bay currently suffer from the serious eutrophication due to the rapid economic and population growth. So, so that the infrastructure is urgently needed. So first, I will briefly introduce the history and the current status of the Lake Biwa watershed. So you know that Lake Biwa is the largest lake in Japan, and uh, this lake is uh, world famous because of its geological longevity, but not of its size. And it shows the high biodiversity and endemisms. And the boundary of this watershed uh, overlap with that of the local government, uh, Shiga Prefecture, located here. And it uh, supports uh, more than 14 million people for the uh, domestic water use in the Lake Viva, Yuto River watershed shown in yellow, and, uh, uh, including Kyoto City, located here. And before the 1960s, the residents uh, used to enjoy the blessing of lakes, such as the lake of culture, recreation, and the healing. But after the uh, economic growth, the lake environment was drastically deteriorated, and some women's groups started the soap movement, not to use the phosphorus-rich detergent. And since the eutrophication became so serious uh, with the increasing the forces rolling, the Shiga Prefecture started a comprehensive development program for the uh, environmental conservation. And in 1980, a prefecture ordinance was implemented to regulate the nutrient loadings. And thereafter, a sewage treatment system was established. Such a technological, uh, institutional and technological approaches were effective in the reduction of the nutrient loading, leading to the improvement of the water quality. However, the lake ecosystem has not yet recovered from the biodiversity loss, and residents have lost their interest in the lake nature uh, with life dependent on the infrastructure. So 
considering this situation, the Shiga Prefecture made a new uh, conservation pro, pro, pro plan uh, called the Mother Lake 21 uh, to rehabilitate the, not only a watershed environment but also the human nature relations. However, there are still some challenges. So the sewage treatment systems are affected with the reduction of the domestic and the industrial loading. But the agricultural loading cannot be uh, reduced by these infrastructures, uh, so that the, its proportion is relatively increasing. And another uh, concern is the uh, instability of such uh, infrastructure under the depopulation scenario. So considering this situation, we are engaged in the watershed governance as the one of the stakeholders in society proposing the basic ideas. So uh, in the conventional watershed management, there is a dissonance of the priority issue between the local and the watershed levels. For example, the government and the researchers want to solve the eutrophication as the watershed issue. While residents may not be interested in this issue, but uh, or rather concerned about their life and livelihood. So to avoid such a conflicting situation, uh, we facilitate the cross-level interaction uh, through the medium of the biodiversity. So for example, uh, we researchers take action to make a, a confirm community realize uh, of nature through the practice of the traditional farming. So on one hand, uh, this activity may be empowered through the enhancement of well-being. And on the other hand, if we can show that uh, traditional farming reduces the nutrient loading, this activity may be supported by the governmental subsidy as the economic incentives leading to further empowerment. So uh, such a cross-level interaction uh, may be effective in the solution both the, uh, local and watershed issues compared to the top-down approach alone. So in a project we propose a working hypothesis of the four years. So as stated just before, the governments want to solve the nutrient issue while the local communities want to enhance their own well-being. But uh, these two gears are not engaged with each other. So uh, we try to engage them with uh, two other gears, biodiversity and community activity. So to drive these four gears, we uh, conduct the action research to enforce the human nature relations, focusing on the familiar nature that's a part of biodiversity which is uh, defined as the nature's meaningful for the local community in the context of the life and life. So if the community members feel happy through the sharing of the cultural value, they will be empowered for the, its conservation, and uh, which can uh, enhance the nutrient cycling directly or indirectly uh, through the ecological function of the biodiversity. So the final goal of our watershed governance is to enhance the social and ecological health of the watershed system, which is indicated by the three components, that is biodiversity, nutrient cycling, and well-being. So uh, I will show you uh, uh, such a uh, governance approach in the Yasu River of Watershed. So this is a map of the Yasu River, which is the largest uh, catchment in the Lake Bear watershed. So upstream area is dominated by the crop, uh, forest and the middle stream by the cropland and the downstream uh, by the built-up areas. So the river water quality is very fine upstream, but uh, gradually uh, deteriorated toward the downstream. So, uh, before explanation of our governance activities, I want to show you a short movie to preview the, uh, who act where and what in this watershed. Yeah, 
life to report to the community. Here is a coaster coming. Okay, did you enjoy it? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in this logic governance, uh, we take the three approaches. So, as a microscopic approach, on one hand, uh, we focus on the five local communities from upstream to coastal area in which the action research is uh, conducted to empower for the conservation of the familiar nature. As a macroscopic approach, on the other hand, we conduct the synoptic research to visualize the special pattern of the biodiversity, nutrient cycling, and well-being at the watershed levels. And finally, we facilitate the cross-level interactions, knowledge, uh, uh, the knowledge uh, and uh, experience of these research and community activities are shared among the diverse stakeholders to enhance the social ecological health of the watershed system. So here, I, uh, I, uh, I, I will show you a case of the uh, action research in this middle stream. So our community-based action research begins with a dialogue to know the focal community well. So I will explain the social and environmental background of the uh, middle stream farmer community. So in this community, the social ecological environment was drastically uh, 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 altered af after shifting from the rainfed irrigation to dam irrigation. So on one hand, the dam construction uh, improved the agricultural efficiency, but the farmers are concerned about the lack of success due to the declining of agriculture. On the other hand, the modern irrigation system caused the eutrophication in streams due to the nutrient loading derived from the rice paddy's waste and uh, decreased the wetland biodiversity due to the fragmentation of the habitat networks. So considering such a historical background, we launched action research together with the community members. So first, we discussed what is the local issue and how to solve it. So for farmers, uh, the most concern is the sustainability of their livelihood and the farmer community itself. 
So that they want to uh, deepen the attachment of the young generation to the community. So to revitalize these communities, they made the action plan for the conservation of the familiar nature, which is the meaning of, of the, uh, their life and livelihood. So through this conservation activity, the participants, including us, learn the local knowledge of the familiar nature while sharing the cultural values. On the other hand, uh, we conducted the ecosystem assessment uh, to monitor the environmental changes while sharing the scientific knowledge with the community members. So these knowledge is uh, fed back to the improvement of the action plan. So in such a way, we build the trust and partnership with each other. So in this action research, uh, important process is to select the observational target with which the community members can realize the changes in the surrounding environment by themselves. So we define a such observational target as an indigenous environmental indicator. Uh, it should be a familiar for the community members and uh, it is easy for the observation. So it also has a potential to drive these four gears, as shown later. So after the workshop, the community members uh, regarded the brown frog as the indigenous environmental indicator here. And, the, uh, uh, the, and then uh, they practice the community activities not only rehabilitate the habitat network for the, uh, this frog, but also to inherit the cultural value of the familiar nature to young generation. And then uh, the community members come to monitor this frog population by themselves because it is easy and fun to observe. So while sharing its ecological knowledge that the frog, frogs prefer to spawn in the rice paddy with the wetland biotopes, the number of farmers practice, uh, increasing number of farmers practice the eco-friendly farming. And the number of rice paddy with the frog spawns increased with the uh, uh, <coughs> spread of eco-friendly eco -friendly farming, especially of the winter irrigation shown in green from 2015 to 2016, like this. So while sharing of, it, of its cultural values, the community members uh, found that familiar nature is attractive to young generation. And with the increasing number of the participants, the bonding social capital were accumulated in this community. And they, they felt these activities were fair and satisfactory feeding back to the environment. And through the ecosystem assessment, we also found the winter irrigation enhances not only frog spawning, but also the wetland biodiversity, because it provides uh, biotopes for the aquatic organisms, uh, even during the non-irrigation period. So such uh, apparent correlation uh, suggests that uh, uh, these frogs also serve as an indicator of the wetland biodiversity demonstrating this activity is effective in the uh, conservation of wetland biodiversity as well as the frog population. And in parallel, uh, we conducted a field experiment uh, together with the farmers to examine how much the eco-friendly farming can reduce the nutrient loading at a local level. So we compare the phosphorus concentration in the irrigation waters between the winter irrigation and the modern irrigation. And in conclusion, the field experiment reveals that uh, winter irrigation can re significantly reduce the phosphorus loading. So if we can show uh, 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 how the community uh, activities contribute to the social ecological health of the watershed system, uh, such scientific knowledge <coughs> may facilitate the institutional support and social engagement in these activities. So expecting such uh, social outcomes, uh, we conducted the synoptic research to visualize the special pattern of the uh, diversity, nutrient cycling, and well-being at the watershed level. <coughs> so for example, we conducted uh, uh, synoptic re uh, research to monitor the nutrient concentration and the diversity in streams of the whole catchment. 
And uh, we found the uh, liver water phosphorus concentration shown, in, shown by the yellow plot size is higher in the middle stream area with the rice paddies. And we also found that the diversity increases with the increasing phosphorus concentration in streams. However, we cannot identify the source of the phosphorus loading based on the concentration data. So we introduced a new isotope technique called the phosphate oxygen isotope analysis, which is a powerful tool to identify the source of the phosphorus. So this analysis suggests that uh, phosphorus in the middle stream may be derived from the uh, rice paddy soils and or uh, fertilizers. Therefore, we expect the uh, spread of the eco-friendly farming can contribute to the redu uh, reduction of the agricultural loading in this watershed. And we also conducted the genotic questionnaire survey for the subjective well-being, uh, covering the house for in the whole catchment area to examine how the social ecological component can affect the well-being at the multiple spatial levels. And to facilitate the cross-level interactions, uh, uh, such a local and scientific knowledge is uh, shared among the diverse stakeholders to enhance the social ecological health of the watershed system. So according to the Mazalek 21 plan, the Shiga prefectures organized the Mazalek forum, which is a platform for the social environment in the watershed governance. So this organizing committee is composed of a diverse stakeholders such as fishermen, farmers, uh, private sectors, NGOs, uh, bureaucrats, researchers, and so on. So this forum uh, uh, annually holds a big stakeholder assembly uh, to check the progress of the uh, implementation plan and uh, feed a public opinion back to the environmental politics. So, we used to join uh, this assembly for the last five years as uh, one of the stakeholders to assist its uh, management. So this forum uh, covers the whole watershed of Lake Viewer so that it is too big to, uh, for uh, participants to work together. So we are planning to have a, a workshop for the local community in the Yasuri Passup watershed in order to share the uh, knowledge and experience of the research and community activities among them. And as another approach, we are developing uh, integrated models to facilitate the cr uh, cross-level interaction among stakeholders. So this is a statistical model incorporating the, uh, our synoptic data uh, to unravel the interrelations among the social ecological components such as the uh, nutrient, biodiversity, economic activity, and well-being. So this model will be used as a communication supporting tool for the stakeholder to envision the social ecological health of the water system. So <clears throat> uh, uh, through the, uh, the, the decision making through the workshops in the uh, social event uh, held in this winter. So this is uh, our proposed approach of the watershed governance to solve the both local and watershed issues. So please take home message as, as follows. So first, uh, how to cognize the watershed issues is different among the diverse stakeholders, but their own values should be equally uh, respected. So as stated by uh, Fikrets, uh, Multiple voices are need, always needed to ensure the uh, diverse governance option which can respond to the uncertainty and unpredictability of the complicated uh, system dynamics. And second, our researchers can serve as a catalyzer to facilitate the communication among the diverse stakeholders through the medium of biodiversity. But we need to demonstrate if our uh, biodiversity-oriented governance approach is applicable to the wide range of the watershed, uh, especially to the developing society uh, with uh, high load loading. So next, Ria-san will introduce a case study in the Laguna del Watershed, Philippines, uh, 
So that uh, it, it, she will uh, uh, explain how our governance approach can modify for application to the, uh, this watershed. So finally, I deeply thank to all of, uh, uh, collaborators and stakeholders who are engaged in the water governance for their great effort and contribution. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>